up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, what's up, people, it's me, I'm L2070, no lie out. Thundercats are on the move, Thundercats are loose, honey. He's about the business of dipping spoons into sugar bowls. Anyway, real girls do real things. So as to make it easier for insertion, maybe? No means no, and yes means no. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, people, what is up, it is me, L Teddy 27 and I am back for yet another review. This, ladies and gentlemen, will be our review for The Real Housewives of Potomac, it is season 7, it is episode 18, this is The Reunion Part 1. Now listen, I only end this because I'm just ready for this to be over, like, I don't know about next season, y'all. I just literally do not know if I can stomach another season. Unless they do it now. I'm hearing there's going to be an overhaul of the cast. And if they do that, I might be down. But as of right now, uh, the way I'm set up, get this good hood on. Oh, it won't go on. Oh, should have rethought that. Okay, there we go. The way I'm set up right now, I don't know. Anyway, we'll be here. So, we start off, um, with, well, we started off with Andy going and visiting everybody in the dressing room. This hoodie thing is just not working out. <laughs> just a mess. We started off with Andy going around to everybody's dressing room, and, you know, they were arriving early. Can I just tell y'all, shout out to Wendy. Wendy never be getting caught off guard. Baby, Wendy gonna have a good outfit on. I don't care where she at. Mama knows the assignment. Mama says, oh, the cameras are there. Don't worry, it could be three, four in the morning. A bitch will be right. Shout out to Wendy and her glam squad because mama don't show up out the house without being nice and right. Anyway, um, so, um, also, <laughs> Candace gave Andy that t shirt that says, Not today, Satan. Not today, neck. Not today, ankles. <laughs> Bitch, can I have a shirt, Candace? Candace, girl, girl, can I have a shirt? Candace, I want one of them shirts. Please give me, I did, one of my subscribers, can y'all buy me one of those shirts? Please, can, can one of y'all just gift me one of those shirts? I need that shirt. Not today, Satan. Not today, neck. Not today, ankles. <laughs> I need somebody to gift me with that shirt. That's all I need. God. Anyway. So we then they get to the um they sit out on the couch or whatnot. So they first start talking about Ashley, okay? So we get to Ashley with the hockey player Luke or whatever his name was, and the fact that that didn't work out because of Michael Darby. Urgh, Beelzebub. Listen, I if y'all are came to this review for me to have any amount of sympathy for the likes of Satana, Urgh, Ashley Darby, you in the wrong place. I do not care. I wish every bad thing on her. Complete and full stop. I mean, we can stop right there. I have no sympathy for her. <sighs> then they briefly talked about Robin getting married, to which Karen yawned. <laughs> Baby, and I don't know if Karen really actually yawned at that moment, but they, they, you know, the, the uh, editors down there to Bravo made sure they copy, cut, and pasted that scene of Karen yawning right there after Robin said she was happy to be married again. <laughs> they are so disrespectful down there to the editing room at Bravo, child, a mess. Giselle is dating some young little dude, um who, in my estimation, is in his own real-life version of the movie Get Out. I mean, dating to Giselle is like being in your own real-life version of the movie Get Out. Bruh, get out. Get out now. A mess. Some dude named James Cameron, real cute from the Winter House. Bruh, please get out. Get out now. You see her kids trying to get out? And they don't even have a choice. They gotta be there until they turn 18. A mess. They talk about Ashley um, getting this house with Michael Darby, which I said from the beginning, 
was the dumbest shit on earth. Some about he has keys to the house and they got rules. Oh, you can't come over unannounced. Oh, you got to give me one hour notice. Well, if I got keys, I can just come in when I want. You can get mad, all that broke down, busted, and disgusted. But at the end of the day, you can't even call the police. Because if you call the police, the police going to say, well, did he break and enter? Does he have keys? Well, he has keys to the house. Bitch, he's paying for the fucking house. You over and over and over keep telling us you can't afford the house and you need him to pay for a house. So if it's a motherfucking house that I'm paying for, what you say is thirteen thousand dollars a month for the goddamn house, however much it is, baby, I'm walking up in that house whenever I give a damn. So if you expect me, Ashley Darby, to believe that Michael Darby has any restriction on when and if he can or will enter that house, you're dreaming. I ain't believing no parts of it. But I have a key to his house. Both of you are ascended from the ninth level of hell. Beelzebub and Satana. Of course you have keys to the house. You both reside in the ninth level of hell. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. Michael rolled up on them uh, when she was with, getting bust down by the um, hockey player dude. And it was supposed to be a three-day weekend and Michael was supposed to keep the babies for three days. Until Monday, Michael said, fuck that shit. Oh, you, he probably knew, because you know Ashley be all on social media. Michael knew what was going on. Michael said, baby, I got a hot piece of dick to go jump on. I got a hot date from Grinder. I got a hot date from Scruff. I got a hot date from Growler. And I ain't got time to be taking care of Damien and Damien Jr. He, ha, Damien, 666, devil child. Got a hot piece of dick and ass waiting for me. I ain't got time to be taking care of these kids. So he rolled up on her, dropped them kids off. And what did mama have to do? She had to let um old hockey player uh, uh, sneak out the back door, baby. And go ahead and catch that subway back home. Go ahead and sneak out the back door, honey. Don't go through the front door. Sneak out the back door, honey. We ain't playing them games. Anyway. um, So she won't be getting half of Michael Darby's anything. Baby mama is getting tickets to the cleaners. I, listen, this is for all y'all in my chat, all y'all in the comment section, way back at the beginning of this season, was going on and on, y'all was dragging me, dragging L. Teddy 27, oh no, Ashley Smart, she's securing the bag, she knows what she's doing, she's playing the long game, and she's gonna take Michael Darby out, I told you people, from the very beginning, that woman was not that smart. I told y'all that. I told y'all there was no way on earth Michael Darby, this rich, old-ass white man who we knew, even though he's from, I think, Australia, not America, America is set up for people like him. You don't think with all that money he didn't have a, you know, team of lawyers ready to rake her over the coals? And what is he doing? Raking her ass over the coals. I told y'all that. I told y'all. Everybody, I remember my good sis. Shout out to my good sis, really be at her 10k. Shout out to her. We're gonna be celebrating her 10k this week. But my sis drugged me and told me all kinds of stuff about uh uh, actually know what she's doing. She's been here since season one. She done been with Michael Darby. Da -da. She done secured the bag and had two kids. Well, she ain't secured nothing. Nothing. Nada. The big zipper roof. Dolo. Come to find out, she can't get half of nothing. Even the money that he made after they got married, she can't touch none of that. She ain't even get no alimony. Like, what is going on? <laughs> like, you can't even get alimony. Now, I'm sure she's going to get um, child support for those kids or whatnot. But and she's claimed some small amount of spousal support or whatever. But, baby, baby, she ain't secured no bag. She ain't got nothing. Baby, the way Mia said under her breath, she need to have another baby. <laughs> Because skanks like Mia, well, <laughs> skanks like Mia know all the different ways with which to try and secure the bag. We got a lot of skanks on this show. They tried to marry old ass men to try and secure bags. You got the original OG skank trying to secure the bag. Um, Grape pubes, Urgh! Karen, get bust down in bathrooms down to the CBC con um, annual convention. You got fucking scripper OG. Mia securing the bag with Gordon Gartrell down there to the script club and then you got Ashley securing the bag with old ass foreign white men seems to be you know um, a prevailing thing on this show I guess honey anyway but yeah I don't feel bad she don't even know the man's net worth a google search maybe like, how don't you even know how much money your husband has? This further proves my point that she was never 
as intelligent as y'all made her out to be ever. Look at where she came from. Look at her mother. I mean, that's point blank your example. Where was she going to learn all this from? Not from her mom. Not from Barnum and Bailey's favorite, Urgh, the bearded lady, Urgh, her raggedy ass mammy. I don't feel bad. Get mad. I was right. You're wrong. And when you're right as much as I am, you don't have to brag about it. Moving on. Ashley was called out for saying that Candace was the least. They showed us the clip of her saying Candace was the least accomplished in the whole um, cast. I think that was season three or four. I think that was season four. And that's why I don't feel bad for Ashley. Ashley, year after year, has been saying some of the most awful and insidious things about these women on this show. I don't feel no kinds of ways about her. I want every bad thing to happen to her. Complete and full stop. She was talking about how Candace, oh, we living in, you living in your mama's home when Candace stayed in the old house and you 30 years old living in your mama's home. Well, let's be clear. You ain't living in your own home. You're a whole fucking ass bed witch who let some white dude blow your back out, beat your box in, plunge your womb so that you can secure a house and so forth. You ain't went out there and earned no house on your own. You ain't went out there and pulled yourself up by the bootstraps. What you did was went out there and pulled yourself up by the pubic hairs. That's what the fuck you did. Pulled yourself up by the areolas. But you out here trying to make Candace feel bad because her parents did what you're trying to do for your son, which is the most baffling shit in the world. The exact same thing that Ashley wants to do for her sons. Mama Dorothy, talk about Mama Dorothy how all, all y'all want to, but Mama Dorothy did that for Candace and the rest of her kids. And y'all trying to make Candace feel bad, or Mama Dorothy feel bad about that, but you're trying to do the same thing for your son. Matter of fact, you want to say, oh, my sons, when they get 30, trust me, they will have a home in their own. Child, girl, we don't know what's going to happen. First of all, we don't know if you don't even have a whole home, because you don't even know how much Michael Darby makes. You have no claim or ownership on this man's money. And who's to say that those kids will even know what to do with their money? Because at the rate you're going, you don't know shit about money. You don't know how to secure wealth. You don't know how to make your money make money for you. So how do we know that you're going to even be able to keep, teach those boys how to do that so that when they do get 30, they ain't broke, bust down, busted, and disgusting? You know how many kids that came, you know, that never learned, that came into money, never learned how to use money, and never, you know, knew what to do with it, end up broke? Like, Ashley, it's a mess. Ashley is trash. She is trash. You may, I don't want to inter, in, inject the whole colorism situation in this, but it's there. We told y'all colorism would have a whole seat at this damn Bravo, um, at this damn reunion on the couch. And it does. Because y'all trying to make Candace feel bad about this reeks of colorism. It reeks of it. Because the ways and manner with which Ashley Darby has a house and has money is way and far worse than Candace ever living in her parents' home. She's a bed winch. That's what the fuck. I mean, call it what it is. She's a bed winch. That's what Ashley Darby is. She's even keeping Michael Darby's last name. I can't do this with y'all. I'm not. Y'all better get me off of Satana. I'm not doing this with her. She's even secured keeping the last name. Like she's Tina Turner. She, I guess she thinks she's Tina Turner. I'm, she don't earn it. No, baby, you ain't earned nothing. You laid your ass down. You put footprints on ceilings. You let this old wrinkled ass white man bust a nut up in you and give you worms. And now you feel like you're old something. Oh, I want to keep the last name for my family's sake. And so my sons can see. Your sons see... Rick, Joe, Bob, Don, Dave entering your home all the goddamn time. That's what your son's about to see. They don't give a shit about the last name. You, oh, I want to, so that my sons can have the same last name as me. It doesn't matter when your son see Rick, Joe, Bob, Don, Dave entering and exiting your home on a constant basis. I want monogamy. Really? Really? I'm not doing this with you, Ashley. Moving on. I noticed during this whole reunion, there was a lot of adjusting of dresses and shit. Now, y'all know I'm not the fashion guy. I don't really pay attention to what they have on. I don't really pay attention to the hair and the makeup and the fashions. But some of them wigs weren't put on right. Like, if you look at the hair, the you know, 
the wig line of Karen, that looked a mess. The top of Karen's dress was a day a mess with, I guess it's the little sheer or tool or whatever it is that's supposed to be flesh tone. It was all scrunched up and bunched up. Like the way it was made, they didn't make it. I think that's one of the problems. These women don't test these dresses out sitting down. I think they get fitted for them standing up and, you know, not remembering that you're not going to be standing up the whole time in these dresses. Most of the time we see you, it's going to be sitting down. So the way that you're not supposed to... I mean, you, you you should, you're probably going to see it, but I'm assuming that that flesh tone little netting thing is not supposed to be that, you know, um, conspicuous, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Because the way it was bunching up and she was trying to adjust, and then Mia, her dress, I guess was too tight around the titties and she kept adjusting. Ashley had a situation. That shit Ashley had don't look real uncomfortable. Like, it looked like, I don't know if it had any lining underneath. Maybe it was scratching her skin or something, but she seemed real uncomfortable in that sequin or whatever that was. It was, a, it was a lot of adjusting. The dresses this year were a mess. Just overall, the dresses this year are a fucking mess. The top of Robin's dress looked a damn mess. Looked like some... Sh some shit that was made at RuPaul's Drag Race by one of the girls who didn't know how to sew and just hot glued, you know, it together. Just a mess. Giselle always looks a mess. Them, you know, with the gloves, with the, everything with Giselle. With the, that was a mess. Candace dress is a mess. When this dress is actually pretty, I just think the little thing that's going up right there is a little too much. But Wendy, y'all know, I told y'all, Wendy usually keeps it together, but... I don't know. There's a lot of adjusting. Y'all let me know what y'all saw. Then they get on. They switch over to Mia. They talk about her sickness and her body and her illness. I ain't going down that road. We ain't going to make nobody feel bad about, you know, the whole whatever she got going on medically. We pray for you. Go with God on that part. So then Wendy was called out on being a hypocrite for, about telling Robin that um, Robin was wrong for saying Mia was lying. And then went outside and said Mia was lying. But we called Wendy out at that time. When he um, owned it, said, yeah, in real time, I did own it. I did put a tweet out saying that I was being hypocritical. <clears throat> then we get to the to the businesses. Now, this is when shit just went, just way left. Mia, Mia girl. Girl with Mia. Mia. Girl. You got to think we just, you do realize, Mia, that millions of people are watching this. You do realize that, right, Mia? You do realize that every word, syllable, letter, and character of what you say is going to be overanalyzed by everybody watching across the Fruited Plains. You can't just be throwing shit out there and think of that in the matter of milliseconds. We're not going to be able to deduce that what you're saying doesn't make sense. Like, I think she's so used to being with people who are around her that just go along with the lie or just be like, oh, that's just Mia, that she could just, she's gotten so comfortable with just throwing out the lie. Oh, you know, we just have three board members. Oh, no, we have eight. Oh, no, well, I'm the CEO. Oh, no, but we have even more than 40% shares in the um in the business. Oh, well, that doesn't even make sense. None of what she did. Oh, well, you know, the bank could just take us off the bank account. Like, even if that part is the case, I've seen situations where people, if you have a business, people are taking off the bank account. But that means that in order for people to be taken off the bank account, you have to bring minutes to the meeting where that happened and stuff like that. That shows that a certain per person was voted out or it was voted that this person no longer be on the bank, bank account. And that's how that goes. But even that notwithstanding, Mia, the lies that you would just let fly out of your mouth. You would have did better said, listen, there's a lot of things going on with that. This is a business, um, this is a, a, a business situation that's being handled by, you know, our representation. I don't feel comfortable talking about that in this forum because there's a lot that's still going on with that. Where is your um a lawyers? Where the fuck is Gordon Gartrell to tell you, hey boo, this shit is serious. This ain't got shit to do with reality TV. You don't need to be putting this shit on social media. You don't need to be talking about this on the show. Like what the fuck is Gordon doing? If Gordon is really this entrepreneur, this man that you told us that had this wild business acumen and was just this person that had these millions and millions of dollars and you married him to secure the bag, where the, where the fuck is he at to tell you, hey, boo, you don't need to be doing this. You don't need to be talking about the businesses on, on the show. You don't need to be talking about it um, in social media. We need to keep this close to the best because they're coming after us. But it makes sense. Everything we know about Gordon is a lie. I don't believe Gordon got anything going on. Because these hoes at this point, we learn, ain't got two nickels to rub against each other. They've been written everything. Oh, we're bi-coastal. Well, I, listen, I'm not going to even pick it up because we know from day one that she wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. We knew early on that mama didn't know nothing about nothing. 
that Botox and all of those foreign um, chemicals and objects that seeped up to her brain and altered brain capacity because she thought bicoastal meant, um, um, you know, from state to state as opposed to on different sides of the goddamn country. <sighs> they ain't got two niggas to rub against each other. They've been renting properties all across, across the place. However, comma, if you rent a property, you got to pay the rent on that. Y'all know, with the amount of money y'all were using to rent properties, you probably could have bought and paid off at least one property, if not a couple properties. I'm trying to establish generational wealth for my children. Where? How? In what alternate universe? I don't believe Gordon Gartrell got, uh, got nothing. They ain't got, I don't believe they have anything. I don't believe they have nothing. I believe she met Gordon Gartrell after he retired. And Gordon Gartrell was throwing around money because he was using his retirement money. And now that money done dried up. And Gordon Gartrell done got two nickels to rub against each other. Now he probably going to have to go back to work. He probably just going to have to go back to work. I mean, they broke, broke. Just a mess. Why is she even on this show at this point? But, I mean, this franchise, you ask why half of them are on this show. Because I thought this show was supposed to be about well-to-do, well-off women who have money. And, you know, and you got a whole lot, child, you got a whole lot of um, whores on this show that's really trying to fake it till they make it. And they ain't made it yet, so they still faking it. This just proves the shit that we hear from Ashley talking about she can't afford to pay her own bills. Mia talking about she don't have two nickels to rub against each other. This just proves Bravo ain't paying these hoes that much. The alleged amounts of money that they say these women are worth and that Bravo, I don't buy none of it. Bravo clearly ain't paying these women that much money. Not enough money to um, afford the lifestyles they're trying to um, project. Because clearly, their money alone is not even enough to um, sustain their own families. Ashley can't sustain her own family off of the Bravo money. Clearly, Mia can't sustain her own family off of the Bravo money. And when I say sustain, at the levels that they're wanting you to believe that they are living at. So clearly, Bravo ain't paying them like that. They ain't paying them like they're probably doing the Atlanta girls. Or not all of the Atlanta girls, but some of the upper echelon Atlanta. I don't know, but all of these hoes seem broke as fuck, and I don't know. Y'all worried about everything in the world, except for the fact that you can't pay to keep the lights on. Except for the fact that you can't pay um, for this house that you got your kids living in, and you're trying to make everybody um, believe that you live in. Yo kids having to live from pillar to post because you're trying to put out there that you this person and you really not y'all worried about the wrong things but you got every amount of smoke and all the time in the world to worry about what another bitch on the show got going on get your life in order anyway they then switch over um um oh also the deflection of Mia, when she was like, well, if you guys are going to laugh, I'm not going to talk about this because you're not going to take it serious. No, bitch, you're deflecting. Classic deflection. Classic. Giselle accused Mia and Gordon Gartrell of embezzling money. I noticed you have no smoke for Giselle. Giselle just later, literally went on national television and basically accused you and Gordon Gartrell of embezzlement. You ain't have no smoke for that. You didn't bat an eye. You ain't blink. I guarantee you, had Wendy said some shit like that, she would have been throwing shit across the stage. But it's no colorism, right? They did switch over to Candace. Giselle shows this DM of Chris apologizing to her, allegedly apologizing to her, um, before the season aired. Now, this was before the season aired. Chris, you ain't shit. I and what did Giselle do? Exactly what I told you she would do. Immediately say, see, he admitted it when the man never admitted it. The man said, if you felt uncomfortable, I apologize to, um, for that. He didn't admit it to anything. But Giselle, being a horrible ass person, did exactly what I thought she would do, which is why you ain't shit, Chris. There's no way in the world you apologize to a horrible person like that. To someone who's doing everything in their power to harm you, to hurt you, to castigate you. To make your life a living hell. You go and apologize to them? Bitch, I be sending that whole anthrax on a daily basis. Hoping that bitch die. That's just me. Listen. 
uh, when he when she read when they showed that on the screen, sc I was like, child, girl, I know you the fuck lying. Thank God Candace came back and clarified that this all went down after the um, I'm sorry, not after, but before the season aired, before they got to see everything. Cause girl, I was gonna really come on here and drag Chris with reckless abandon. Anyway, um, Giselle tries to apologize to Candace for calling Chris a uh, um, a, um sneaky link and saying all and, and, and making up all these things. And raggedy ass Ashley trying to chime in. You know, she just you know she embellishes a little bit. She just you know you know just, girl. That's why Candace said, "Girl, shut the fuck up. This ain't your fight. You need to stay your ass the fuck over there. Stay your ass the fuck over there." This ain't got shit to do with you, Ashley. Say, not yet, because we about to get to you, Ashley. Girl, the way Candace then told her you could shove it up your ass and began to undress Giselle, she began to drag that bitch. And I was here for her. You can see Giselle all squirming in her seat, all uncomfortable. No, bitch, get all of this shit. Get all the motherfucking smoke. The way she undressed, I was here for all of it. Baby, she tried to say, she told Giselle the way you changed, because she said the problem wasn't that Chris that you said that Chris made you feel uncomfortable. The problem was that you kept trying to add to the story. You kept trying to embellish the story. You kept conveniently trying to make the story seem way worse. Be when we have no evidence that Chris did anything, you even admitted he didn't say anything, he didn't try anything, he didn't do anything. You just felt uncomfortable on your own. You might be projected. Maybe you like Chris and you was afraid that Chris might try something and you was gonna fall for the trial. That's the whole thing, but you admit it. You said he never said anything. He never tried anything. When you asked him to leave, he left. Where's the problem here? But, like Candace said, you saw her uh, several times before the um the um situate right after that reunion, and you didn't say anything. I never saw you. Bravo roll back bean footage. We saw the picture of you at the woman's thing. She Candace said, bitch, you got my phone number. You could have called me, you could have said, Hey, can you meet me somewhere and we go out and eat? I don't even want this to be on um, camera. I just really want to talk to you about something that made none of it. Until you came on screen and tried to put that out there and Candace wasn't here for it. And I don't blame her. I, she drug Giselle. She drug Giselle. I was here for all of it. So then Candace talked talk, talk about her embryo. She said she had six embryos. Stupid ass Giselle. What do you do with embryos? This is why your daughters have no clue of how their reproductive organs work. This is why you over there wondering why the daughters don't know how the reproductive organs work. <laughs> Clearly you don't. Like, how are you a woman don't even know what to do with embryos? Like, really? I blame Hampton University because y'all gave this woman a degree. And she has no clue what embryos are or what to do with embryos. Just a mess. They um then started dragging Giselle again, and I was here for it because they were like, Giselle is always trying to break up families. That's her thing. G G Giselle tried to deflect off of it. Ashley gathered her and said, nah, bitch, come back around, bitch. This ain't no all lives matter shit, bitch. This is you, bitch. You are the one. You are the stinking ass, trifling ass whore. Not today, Satan. Not today, neck. Not today, ankles. I need that shirt, y'all. I really need that shirt. But she drew, baby, she began to drag Giselle. I was here for it. I sat back with a drink in my hand. Like, yes, get that bitch. Finish her. Destroy her. We're here for all of it. Baby, what she said, <laughs> you over here worried about what my husband got going on or what every other family got going on when your dwindling uterus was looking for television. I said, bitch. <laughs> what she said, your dwindling uterus. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't owe me nothing. Now, I'm going to tell y'all this. And it kind of went off of that from there, okay? Let me tell y'all this. If Giselle gets on this goddamn reunion and tries to deflect and make this whole big moment about her hysterectomy and all of that, I'm coming over here and I'm dragging her. And if you got a problem with me dragging this woman about her illness, you may not want to watch that up, that arm review. Because I'm telling you I am. Because you spent like act like not nice, like, like Candace said. You spent this whole season focused on everything else, focused on these lies you're making up about Chris, focusing on Mia's um, um, illness, um, health scares, focusing on the fact that you're cheering Mia beating up and assault, not beating up, but assaulting Wendy, focused on everything else when you had a whole health scare yourself 
and did not tell us about it, but then you're going to try and conveniently bring it up at the reunion so as to garner some sympathy, so as to get us to feel some kind of way about you? Fuck you, Giselle, and fuck your life. Like she said, your dwindling uterus should have been all over the television screen before. Don't try and cart it out there now to get some sympathy point, points because we have none for you. We have none. So just like you didn't want us to know about it during the season, we don't want to know about it during the reunion. Sorry, boo. Boo boo. Boo boo. Boo boo. You can't have it both ways. We'll be back. Well, Y'all know tomorrow, uh, me and Darren, I think we're going to be on um, Medusa's channel. Uh, I'll put it on my community wall um, where we're going to be at tomorrow. Um, and we're going to do what we do tomorrow. We'll have the panel and we'll discuss. Y'all get in the comment section and let me know. Let's argue. Argue about what we saw. Ciao. Let's, I, I'll meet y'all in the comment section. That's all I got for y'all. Until next time, thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out.